Hey guys, it's Goofy Goop the Balls, and today I want to talk to you all about how skill-based matchmaking could be a marketing ploy to help Sledgehammer Games make more money off of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And I know that might sound a little bit ridiculous to some of you out there, but I promise you, just hang with me and listen to what I have to say, because it's pretty logical and it makes a lot of sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how Advanced Warfare protects noobs in this game, and then the next thing I'm going to talk about is how protecting noobs leads to more money for Sledgehammer. So there are two main ways that this game protects noobs, and the first one is skill-based matchmaking. As I've discussed in previous videos, the majority of players of Call of Duty are noobs. I'd say 90-95% to of the players are noobs. Therefore, with skill-based matchmaking, if you have a bunch of noobs, like let's say you have 12 noobs and they all have .5 KDs, and they get thrown into a match together because of skill-based matchmaking, then their KDs are universally going to go up. Every single one of them is going to be doing better because they're playing people of their skill level, and people of their skill level aren't as good, and they're not as good either, but still, because one kill always means one death, every single one of these kids, on average, will probably have their KD go up. For example, one of these kids probably goes, say, 5 and 10, just to make it easy. When he plays in the normal lobby of a previous Call of Duty game, like, say, Call of Duty Ghosts, he'll go 5 and 10 in a normal game. But when you put him into Advanced Warfare, skill-based matchmaking him into a lobby of players just as the same skill level as him, he might go something like 8 and 10, 9 and 10, maybe even 10 and 10, even positive, above that. So if you string a bunch of these games together, his KD is definitely going to go up. So that's really how skill-based matchmaking protects the noobs, because it has them play other noobs and so they're not getting destroyed as they were in previous Call of Duty games, and because their KDs are going up and they think they're doing better in the games, they're going to start playing the games for longer. If you guys don't believe me though, let's look at a quote from Michael Condry on his statement regarding skill-based matchmaking that came out about a week ago, just to put to bed some concerns about skill-based matchmaking, where he says, quote, In short, almost universally, kill-to-death ratios are up and people are playing longer, and that makes us happy. So if we dissect that quote a little more, he says almost universally, not universally, almost universally. And that definitely pertains to the news, because like I said, they make up about 90 to 95 percent of the Call of Duty player population. And so I guess you could say they almost make up the whole population. So what Michael Condry really means by that statement is that the vast majority of players have seen a rise in kill-death ratio and thus have been playing the game a lot longer. And another thing that statement says is that the top percentage of players have not seen a kill-death ratio rise and are not playing the game for longer. And as to why he'd do that, I, I'll get to that a little bit later when I start talking about the money. But to get back on point, Michael Condry is happy that the majority of the players are seeing a KD rise and a time played rise. And that, again, we'll talk about that a little more when we get to the money. Now, the other main way that this game protects noobs is through supply drops. And now, this might be a little surprising at first, but when you think about it, it really does make a lot of sense. Supply drops are earned randomly throughout playing Call of Duty. You just get them based off some random time thing, they look at your skill, but for the most part, it's pretty much random. So regardless of if you're good or if you're bad, you're going to get them no matter what. But this is a little bit different than all previous Call of Duties have done it. You've always had to earn your stuff. So like, let's say this was a previous Call of Duty game, you wouldn't just randomly get your certain weapon variants and things like that. You would have to earn them, because that's how it always was. You'd earn your titles, your emblems, and things like that. You'd... So why do they do it differently in this game? And again, the answer is to protect the noobs. Because they're the players that are not going to play this game for super long, and the players who are not going to have the time and effort to earn things like you had to in previous Call of Duty games. So a way to make them play more would be to give them these random supply drops to keep encouraging them to play. Because even if they're not going to earn these things, they still get them and they still feel motivated like, ooh, if I keep playing, you know, I'll keep getting more of these. Whereas in previous Call of Duty games, it was so much work to unlock certain things and they were just like, nah, I'm not going to play for that long and I don't have the time and effort to do that. So I'm, j I'm just not going to do it. But in this game, because you get, get them randomly, it keeps those noobs playing longer and really protects them. And it comes to a disadvantage, again, to the top percentage of players, the ones who are going to play this game for a really long time, put a lot of time and effort into it. They're putting in all this time and effort, and in the end, they're just going to get these supply drops randomly. They get no reward for playing this game endlessly and pouring their heart and soul into it. But again, in all previous Call of Duties, you always got rewarded for that. If you put in the time and effort to complete a challenge, you got something useful out of it or something that you could really show off to your friends. But in this game, you just you randomly get elite weapon variants, so it's just really giving the noobs an advantage that they don't deserve. And so, again, why would Sledgehammer do this? Why wouldn't they reward the diehard players who are always going to keep playing this game no matter what, and reward the players who really don't care? Why would they do that? And the answer could be because they want to make more money. 
So, if we go back to my point before that the vast majority of players in this game are the noobs, we can really start to see how Sledgehammer makes more money off of pleasing the noobs instead of the skilled players. For example, pleasing the noobs, let's say, makes 10 million noobs happy and upsets 1 million skilled players. Whereas pleasing the skilled players makes 1 million skilled players very happy, but it makes the 10 million other players sort of indifferent to the game. So just from a marketing standpoint, what do you want? 10 million happy players or 1 million happy players? Obviously, to make more money, you want 10 million happy players. Look at it this way. Every happy player is going to play the game for a lot longer, and thus be more likely to buy things like the Exoskeleton DLCs and any upcoming DLCs like the Havoc DLC or any DLCs after that. And they're also going to be much more likely to recommend this game to their friends and get them onto this game too. And now, since every happy player does that, then having the most happy players is going to make them the most money off of this game. So just bringing it down to a marketing standpoint, they don't necessarily want to please the most skilled players, they want to please the majority of the players, which in this case is the noobs, because that makes them more money off this game. Now I'm sure some of you out there really don't believe me and think that this is just completely ridiculous, but again, let's look back at that quote. In short, almost universally, kill death ratios are up and people are playing longer and that makes us happy. So what Michael Condry is saying there is that the majority of players are seeing KD rises and longer play times, whereas the minority, which is probably the skilled players, is not seeing a rise in KD and their time to play is either the same or going down. But he says that makes us happy, so he's happy with the majority of players playing longer and he's not so concerned with the non-majority or the skilled players playing longer, because when the majority plays longer, they make more money. And from a marketing standpoint, again, that's all that really matters, making the most profit out of this game. So that pretty much sums up my theory about this as to why Advanced Warfare is a game that really pertains to the noobs and not to the skilled players like all previous Call of Duties have. So let me know what you guys think about this theory. You think it's true? You think it's false? Why and why not? Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys liked this video or enjoyed it, I'd really love it if you could hit that like button for me. And if you guys are new to my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date every time I post a new Advanced Warfare tip, gameplay, or commentary. This has been Goofy Goop the Balls, and I'll catch you all in the next video.